Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. I'm Andy Michelle. That's Matthew Hatfield. We're very close to the midway point of the season for a lot of schools, and it's getting interesting. I like to say in college football, Andy, it's Separation Saturday. Well, this was the separation weekend for many teams on the high school scene in Virginia, and we start things off in Virginia Beach where the Cox Falcons take on the Salem Sun Devils. Salem has won the last two meetings in close fashion overtime a year ago, but Cox comes in 5-0 and for the first time since 1991, trying to keep their undefeated march going. Salem in the white, Cox in the green. We are ready to go. Almost ready to go. Hold on. We had a formality. We had a coin flip. Now we're ready to go. Taylor Watson Jones, he's not ready for the snap, and he gets trucked by Mikel Franklin. And Cox's defense was stifling just a week ago, shutting out Bayside 20 to nothing. Now it's the offense's turn, and Matt Demisey, he squirts away from a defender, gets inside the oh. red zone as the Cox offense is starting to get things churning early on. And dragging guys down the field. Big guy, big run. Here is Cole Johnson. He keeps it himself, and whoo, he gets flipped upside down by Teron Reynolds. And Cole Johnson headed to play his college football at James Madison University, the efficient signal caller for Cox. Taking a look at it as Reynolds just dumps him there on his back. Cox, though, in position to score and take the lead first until, uh-oh, it's a fumble. Marcus Joyner, the linebacker for Salem, will scoop it up and race 88 yards to pay dirt. And it's Robert Jackson's Sun Devils on top in the early going. I don't know if you can call that a fumble. It's like he almost took the hand off. Here's the PAT. It is good. And then there's a 7-0 lead. Salem on top early on. The Salem defense doing a mighty good job against the Cox offense. Now it's Watson Jones hitting Devontae Williams for a 13-yard touchdown pass. And the Sun Devils up by two scores in this one. 14-0. Not quite at halftime yet. Cole Johnson says, hold on. We're not through yet. He runs, he scrambles, he steps up, he finds Jake Herslow in the end zone. 26 yarder, and it's 14 7. An excellent job by Johnson to step up in the pocket there. And now Salem trying to get a trip play going, but Jordan Williams, the junior defensive lineman, not having any of that as he dumps Jameer Hudson. We watch it again. You see why Penn State and Maryland have already offered this junior D lineman. That, that's not a way to go forwards right there. Maybe you got to block that guy. Anyway, later on, it is. Tavante Robinson with a pass off the trickeration, but he throws it to the wrong guy. It's Tavon Reeves. He takes off with it. Reeves inside the 20 off the interception. That's why quarterbacks throw passes. And the Salem defense after that interception there by Reynolds. It's going to be Malik Butts getting away and keeping his balance. What a job by Malik Butts for that 18-yard touchdown run. Salem's offense for years, Andy, known for that running game with Williams and Butts. And uh-oh, they're not going to quite get the two-point conversion to go their way this time. Yeah, options and kickers don't really go so well usually. 20 to 7 though, still on top Salem. Falcons trying to come back. Will the cheerleaders help them? Johnson says, all right, this time I am going to throw the pass. So he's the wise out. Fires it. Uh-oh, same result. Intercepted by Tracy Martin this time. Down the sidelines, and the defense comes up big again for Salem. That is Salem's favorite, Martin, right there. Tracy with an interception. That defense opportunistic all season long and really the staple of Robert Jackson's program. And now it's going to be Devontae Williams taking oh. off. Thought he had a long touchdown run there, but big plays from the Salem offense. And that's a double whammy. He hurt his knee and his head on that one. Yeah, that's not good. Here's Watson Jones. This is good, though. He finds Dwayne Platt, 28 yards. Look at the great catch by Platt. That'll set up Butts' two-yard touchdown run. 27-7 to now. Salem with the lead, 3.19 to go in the third quarter. Then Cox trying to come back. Can they get anything going here? Here is Jones rolling out. Johnson sets. Still roll. Still roll. Fires back in the end zone. Diving it to No, it hit the ground. That doesn't count. Nice try, though. Several near misses and some turnovers costing the Cox offense in this one. That'll be Johnson rolling to his left, finding Matt Damasi for a five-yard touchdown pass. Can they get the rally going? It's going to be close here, down 13 with 2.22 to go. They need an onside kick. Uh, no. There's no drama here. That, that, we need more drama for that one. It's just gobbled up. That's the way you play it, but not good for drama. 27-14, final score. Salem takes it over. Malik Putz with 82 yards on the ground, two touchdown runs, while Cox had 201 yards passing, two touchdowns from Cole Johnson, but a couple of turnovers keeping the Falcons from moving to 6-0 on the season. It's fall. It's nice. Why don't we stay in the beat? Why not? First Colonial, the Patriots at 3-3, three three, taking on the Bayside Marlins, who are coming off that 20-0 shutout loss to Cox on Monday night. Bayside trying to get to 5-1, and, and Coach John White's Marlins know the offense has to be sharper in this one to have it happen. All these guys right now talking about the weather, they're just happy it's not pouring rain still. Finally, they get a dry field. And here is Sean Steverson. 
up the middle, through a couple of tacklers, drags a couple of tacklers. Finally, they get him down. 28-yard pickup right off of the bat for Steverson. And first, Colonial trying to get on the board first as they tick under midway through the first period. But it'll be Bayside quarterback Dante Lampley, the South Carolina State commit, finding his open man for a touchdown. Jay Sean Williams, a nine-yard score, and the Marlins out in front. Six nothing on top early are the Marlins from Bayside. And it is Caleb Brody up the middle again, up the middle. Caleb Brody to the outside. Caleb Brody still running. Caleb Brody still running. Caleb Brody, oh, is he down? Come on, ref, give it to him. No, he's down on the one. Not in, but you know what? That's okay. You get him down there, just go ahead, one more play. Now he's got it. There's a touchdown for Brody. Give it back to Brody. He had only one carry against Cox, but over 230 yards rushing against Tallwood and Kellum. He's already eclipsed that rushing total from the loss. The extra point from Austin Hampton. It'll be up and through. So Bayside now looking a lot better offensively than they did in their previous game, 13 to nothing, and they're not done. They want more. They want more. First, we're going to see some defense, though. This is Hibbler on the end around, and, uh, well, there's a lot of white shirts over there. It was Devointe Bradshaw that finally pushed him out of bounds, but that's not a lot of room on the outside. First, Colonial's defense hanging tough. They need a turnover, though, to get them in position to score. Not going to happen on this one, it looks like, as Caleb Brody gets away oh. from a defender, and he is off to the races. Not going to catch Caleb Brody. 76 yards to the house. Big time run from Brody. Oh, we tripped over the tarp. You can't tackle him, but the tarp can get him. That's the only thing that can stop him right now. The fade and the corner is good for the two-point conversion. Lampley to Armani Chapman. Two points is good. It is 21-0. Home team up. So no turf monster today, just no, a tarp it's monster. No, tarp monster. Scotty Watson trying to avoid both the turf and tarp monster. He rolls to his right. Gets plenty of time to throw it, and he will find his man with Whoa. the catch. But, oh, no, he won't. The big time hit there by Chris Walker. He put the Madden boomstick on him. Uh, Steverson takes the shot, loses his hat. I'm surprised he held onto his teeth, much less his helmet. Still trying to get something done here. Here is Langer. Downfield, Chapman wide open. 55 yard pass, second touchdown of the day for Chapman. Brings it to 28 0. If you remember that dramatic win against Kellum, the Lampley Chapman connection came through in the clutch, and now they're just extending the lead. Uh oh. oh. And Watson has it knocked out, intercepted, will be run back the other way by Eric Melton. 33 yards for a touchdown. It's just been a disastrous one for First Colonial, who's trying to get to four and three. Watson hit in the back by his own running back. He wasn't even contacted. They just ran into each other. Watson's still trying, though. He's not quite done yet. Here he goes downtown, and he finds a receiver. It's Collis Cooper, 33-yard catch, and that's going to set him up. See if they can break the score. A great catch by Cooper with Cole Patterson, the Virginia Tech commit, covering there and tackling. And Rayshon Steverson will punch it into the end zone for a nine-yard score. Just a bit too late, Andy, though, as they got down 30-plus and will lose 34-6 to against the Bayside Marlins, who moved to 5-1 and on the season. When you break up the shutout, though, that's, there's some pride involved in that. 34-6, your final score of Bayside over first Colonial. Lampley with two touchdown passes, 175 yards of the air. Brody with 130 yards rushing and two touchdowns, while Steverson contributed 51 yards on the ground and a score ended loss. Ocean Lakes still in the Beach District, 52 to six over Kellum. Ocean Lakes just keeps on rolling. Kellum LeBourne's averaging about 18 yards a carry, I think still, 19 for a buck 48 and four touchdowns. Eh, an average night for him on this one. <laughs> Jermaine Trout with four receptions for 104 yards and two scores as the Dolphins win in Chris Scott's coaching return. Just four touchdowns though. Yeah, That's not, not, not a whole lot. Slow night, he must've been sick. When we return, we'll have Patrick Henry Roanoke taking on Cave Spring. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report alongside Andy Mashaw. I am Matthew Hatfield. Well, Andy, we now go to Roanoke to check out the Patrick Henry Patriots taking on the Cave Spring Knights at the White Bogle Stadium, Edmonds Hemis Field. Boy, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Patrick Henry at three and three overall in the year. Cave Spring one and four, and it'll be the talents of Krishan Kalfi leading the way for PH Roanoke. Kalfi, quick pass out to Sammy Trustclair, and Kalfi had like five touchdowns last time he was on our show, and pretty good start to this one. This one goes downfield, and it's Andrew Harris outrunning everybody. 69-yard touchdown from Calfee, and it's 7-0 Patriots up top early. That bomb has them in the lead just a minute and 27 seconds into the contest. 
How does K-Spring respond? Well, they're going to need the defense to force a turnover. Here it comes. Nope. Cal Reeves, the senior linebacker, drawing the ball loose. Austin Reagan will recover it inside the five-yard line down to the three as the Knights are in business. In business and ready to go. They got a fullback here. Direct snap to a fullback. You don't see that very often. Cody Amos says, why not? It's a three-yard touchdown run, which is snapping to me more often. Seven to seven. Deadlocked going to the second period. Buckle up. This will be a fun one. Calfi, touchdown pass again for him on the day. Another one to Josh Augustine, a 12-yarder. As Patrick Henry now has doubled up Cave Spring, 14 to seven. Ensuing kickoff. Very dramatic. This is Memes Sabanja on the kickoff return. Looking up, up the middle, gets a couple of blocks, breaks it to the outside. He's got some room across the 30. Yeah, well, knocked out of balance with a pretty good return. Get some momentum going there for Cave Springs. Maybe we get something ruined here. And they will hand it off to Tyler Rice, but uh-oh, pick skeins loose on the ground, and it's going to be a white shirt from Patrick Henry Rono scooping it up. Patrick Henry with great field position and the lead. And here's Calfi again, this time on the rollout. He's still rolling out. He's still rolling out. Can I run it? Nope, not going to run it. We're going to throw it. It's a touchdown to Andrew Harris. Three yards out and watch Calfi. He goes up. Andrew Harris, there you are. Picks him up. Make sure he's got some camera time for his teammate. 21 to 7. Patriots still on top. That's a good leader right there. And he thought about running it, but he wants to pad them passing stats. And again, some more prolific passing oh. moments for Calfi. Avoids the rush not once, but twice. And he hooks up here with his receiver. It's going to be Josh Augustine. Excellent block, as you pointed there. Going to go the distance, 45 yards, and the Patriots are rolling. Well, if Cave Springs is going to make any kind of attempt at a comeback here, down 28-7, they got to have some defense, and they get some defense. They force a punt. Unfortunately, when we show you punts, it's usually not good, and this is one of the times when it's not good. It's a muffed punt, and it's on the ground, and then it's loose, and we think that's Nick O'Donnell at the bottom of the pile, scrumming around, and he picks up the... Loose ball, and it's a first and 10 inside the 10 yard line. And Javon Hallinghead takes advantage of it. That's a good name for a running back. Hallinghead with a touchdown run. Now 41 to 7. And the threat of Calfee being able to pass always opens up the running game with Hallinghead and others. Cave Spring trying to get something on the board here before they say goodbye on this one. It'll be a nice completion. Jacob Knight, 32 yards to Desmond Tates. The Knights feeling pretty good about that one. Got rolling a little bit here. Here's Knight. A little bit of low pass, but Zach Bowling brings it in on the flare route. Gets it inside the 10-yard line, down to the 6, and they're closing in. And why not give it to Sabanja here? He looked pretty promising on that kick return, and inside the red zone, he's going to see green touchdown here. Cave Spring on the board here. Patrick Henry's offense, though, was just unstoppable. 41-14, to they win it behind Coffey's five touchdown passes. He's now got 1,397 yards and 16 touchdown strikes through the air in seven games this season. He's got 10 touchdowns on our show alone. <laughs> he does. How about the Narrows Green Waves edging the Bland County Bears 27 to 26 in a Mountain Empire District matchup. Landon Neal and Cole Baker with two touchdowns apiece while Colton Slaughter had two touchdown rushes in the loss for Bland County. Colton Slaughter, got some good football names in oh, here. Yeah. Tuscarora 21-20, a one-point nail-biter over Potomac Falls in the 5A Conference 14. Nick Speroni with two touchdown receptions from quarterback Daniel Smith as the Huskies continue to move on in Group 5A as a factor. Robinson, seven points, a winner over Stonebridge, 27-20. The Rams actually trailed 20-13 this one, but Sean Foncha with the game-winning touchdown as they defeat the Bulldogs and continue to be a threat there in 6A in the north. When we return, Andy, we've got the showdown everybody's been waiting for in Chesapeake. Oscar Smith, Indian River, unbeaten. Will the streak come to an end? Well, you better come on back on Sports Report and find out. Welcome back to Sports Reporters. As we continue on, this is the big one. This is the one everybody wanted to see. Number two versus number four, Indian River versus Oscar Smith. They had to move it to Hickory to get some bigger stands in there. They did, Andy, and both teams undefeated on the season. Oscar Smith riding that 78-game Southeastern District winning streak. They haven't lost to a Southeastern District team since Hickory, ironically, with the games being played, back in 2006. And Indian River thinks they're the team with the makeup to get it done, and the Braves have been mighty impressive all year long in the second season under coach Glenn McFarabee. It'll be early on quarterback 
Tyree Givers Wilson, that's not going to snap the streak as Will for Long in that pass rush was teed off on TGW in the first period. A little bit later on, Ray's backed up, and the words of Dave Chappelle, what did the defense say to the punt? Slap. Right back out of bounds it goes. That is the safety blocked right back. Jameek Jones with a blocked punt of Jalen Williams and into the safety. Two to nothing. Oscar Smith on top early. Jones, one of a couple former Great Bridge Wildcats we'll see in this highlight package, making an impact either for Oscar Smith or Indian River. Well, helping out the Tigers there get that two nothing lead going into the second quarter. It's a defensive battle. If you like physical, hard hitting football, this was the game to be at. Sean Mitchell trying to get some aerial fireworks going, but uh oh, wrong jersey, wrong team. Devin Hunter with the interception, and the junior four star recruit is thinking pick six. 53 yards to Pater. Indian River now has the lead, or do they? A couple of good blocks on that play. It returns at 53 yards, but one bad block is going to make it all go away. I think. Block in the back takes the score away, but that's okay. Tyne Smith says, I don't need blocks in the back. I can just run right up the middle. 39 yard touchdown run for Smith. Indian River on the board. It is silly. No flags. Let me check. Nope. We're good. No flags. All right. That counts. 39-yard touchdown. 7 to 2. Braves take the lead. He wanted to make sure before he celebrated. Another <laughs> one of those former Wildcats from Great Bridge we teased about that would be in this highlight package. Tyne Smith, the guy leading that Indian River running game all year long. And then it's TGW. Givers Wilson to Kyron Best on the post pattern. 40 yards for a touchdown. Indian River not only has the lead now, Andy. They're up 12, 14 to 2 on Oscar Smith going to the fourth quarter. Oscar Smith hasn't had a game not scoring a touchdown since 1998. Looking pretty good. Givers Wilson off the play fake goes downfield. Watch the catch by Tavante Beckett. Look at the one-handed grab and he stumbles downfield for the touch. Uh, oh no, it's not a touchdown. Illegal man downfield. The second time the Braves get one wiped out. There it is. There's the lineman, 64 on the right side of the screen. He's maybe uh, two yards downfield. You get one yard before they throw it. It's, it. Technically, it's correct, but it's a very close call. And I just want to see the catching. And Beckett, the Virginia Tech commit and former Oscar Smith Tiger, thought he had the game clincher against his old team. And there's a bad snap uh -oh. on the punt. Uh-oh. Oscar Smith has still got life here as Jalen Williams will be brought down. Right there at about the 14 yard line it will be. So Oscar Smith is in business if they can score and do so quickly. It's third down and Coach Rich Morgan goes to the gadget play. Look at all the trickeration. It's Shai Keem Hussey who comes up with it. This is a receiver and he throws the pass to the quarterback. Sean Mitchell in the end zone. Receiver to quarterback. It's a four yard touchdown. Sophomore to junior crime there. Now it's Oscar Smith the oh. back pass. Oh, Courtney Johnson can't get it to go there. Devin Hunter breaking it up. That's 14 to eight. Indian River just needs a couple of first downs to salt it away. They get two, but with just under 40 seconds to go, they'll call timeout and try to just punt it away and get the victory. Low snap, slow snap, pressure comes, it forces a high, slow punt, and that forces a very fast return. Down the sidelines, it is D'Angelo White, a 59-yard punt return. Less than a minute to go, and Oscar Smith takes the lead. Unbelievable. Now the all-important extra point for the lead and Cameron Luster's kick is good with room to spare. And the Tigers, it looks like they're going to stun Indian River in the last three minutes. Tyree Givers Wilson, his last gasp here, intercepted oh. by Brandon Delbridge. And the Oscar Smith fans are jumping for joy, going crazy as the streak will continue. 79 straight in the Southeastern District. And Oscar Smith gets it done in dramatic fashion, 15 to 14. Sean Mitchell didn't throw a touchdown pass, but he caught one. D'Angelo White had the game winning touchdown. Ty and Smith with 103 yards rushing in the loss for Indian River. I give them credit, the game they were probably outplayed. Oscar Smith was, they found a way to get it done. Western Branch staying in the Southeastern District also finds a way to get it done by two points over Nesman River, 28-26. Another nail biter in the SEB as Keith Bryant and Brandon Burr combined for over 200 yards rushing. Two point conversion, no good for the Warriors. From the thrill of victory and agony of defeat in the Oscar Smith Indian River game, we go to Newport News now. Phoebus Heritage, the other Saturday afternoon game in Tywater. Jamari Becknell, he's the workhorse for the Phantoms and he will get things started for them offensively. Right to work for Big Now, a couple of yards here, and now we're going to throw it. Justin Wright, Elijah Nelson, 31 yards. It's a touchdown. Phoebus on top early, 7-0 Phantoms. Phantoms lost to Heritage last year. 
in Hampton at Darling Stadium. Different strike this time in Newport News at John B. Todd Stadium. And the Hurricanes trying to repeat last, last year's performance, though, with Zacharion Johnson running the football. Getting some help from some other guys, too, including right there, Roy Johnson the third. That Phoebus defense not letting them get the big run, though. Yeah, if you like rushing, uh, pay attention to the last two plays because most of it looks more like this. Only 32 yards allowed rushing the entire game by that phantom defense. Andre Smith, Jonathan Gregory and company, they are hard hitting. And there is Justin Wright, the quarterback, finding Andre Jackson to move the chains. When you move the chains, you give it to Jamari Becknell, he'll finish it off. Little draw play, not going to pass it, we're going to run it. 41 yards for Becknell, that's a touchdown. 14-0, Phantoms on top. The former York Falcon doing yeoman's work for the Phoebus Phantoms. Two touchdown advantage, and guess what? They're going to try to increase it. However, on this play, Becknell's not going to get much room. Oh, even runs into the referee there, and a penalty flag will be thrown. Not well, once, but twice. Throw a flag on himself. That's targeting. He went to the head. No problem. Justin Wright downfield. Open is Ree Green, and it's a 33-yard touchdown. 21 nothing. Phoebus rolling. Ree Green, the mean green fighting machine. Phoebus just continuing to dominate as they've done all year long in the Peninsula District, even like the old Phantoms. There's a completion, though. Amanye Watson on the reception from Jeremiah Boyd inside the 30. However, the ball would pop uh -oh. out. Oh, that's too bad. They finally had something going. Now it's recovered by the fan. Wait, wait, no, no, he's down. He's down by contact. That's not a fumble. And they keep the ball. They're going to keep it on the ground again. This is Roy Johnson. Johnson with some rushing room inside the 20 to the red zone. You didn't know George Chubb's Massenburg had the challenge button. There he you just, go. He pressed it, threw the flag, and got the ball back. Uh -oh. And that uh -oh. defense, though, is looking to rip it out again. And Phoebus is just suffocating Anthony Davila on the initial hit there. They lose it again. They lost it again. They finally had some momentum. They were really starting to, oh, no, no, it's second down. They got it back. Recovery for Heritage. Didn't need to challenge that one at all. This time it'll be Chris Brown stepping up in the pocket. Find his man. That's Timothy Payne. Touchdown. Hurricanes finally on the board here. Can it spark a comeback? Well, they're down 21, going to the fourth quarter. Going to need the defense to do something amazing real quick. Got some time left, but that's Javari Begnell. They got him left. They run him to the outside. 11-yard gain here as he picks up some yardage. And then that worked. Don't oh, try it to the other side. To the right side. He gets to the edge and... They got an angle on, no, no, don't have an angle on him. 18 yard touchdown, Becknell too fast to the end zone, 35 to seven feet. Phoebus looking like they're in top notch form as they get ready for that showdown against Hampton in a week at Darling Stadium. And there is the Phantoms defense again, not letting them get much going through the air. Brown back to oh. throw and it's oh. looking like a possible safety. Yeah, that's intentional grounding. Did not get it back to the line of scrimmage. Intentional grounding in the end zone equals two points for the defense equals a 37-7 victory, Phoebus over Heritage. Betnell runs for three scores, Wright throws for two scores, Phantoms dominate by 30, avenging last year's loss to the Hurricanes, who only get one touchdown coming from Tim Payne in the second half. In the Eastern District, it is Norview, 10-point winner over Booker T. Washington, 30-20. Kevin Marks and DJ Mack with four touchdown runs to propel the Pilots past the Bookers. 30 to 20 in that one. Lafayette over Grafton in the Bay Rivers District. As you see, the Rams getting tested by the Clippers, but they stay undefeated as Pittsburgh commit Chase Pine rushes for a couple of touchdowns to lead Andy Lynn's group. Yep. And in the private school sector, we go to Atlantic Shores with a one-point nail-biter. 36-35 in overtime over Norfolk Academy. Seahawks escaping thanks to Ryan Chamberlain and Jordan Kennedy combining for five touchdowns. Atlantic Shores got blanked last year by Norfolk Academy, so they too get revenge. Coming back, look at that. Here's our player of the week. It is DJ Walton from Princess Anne. The running back had 134 yards rushing, five touchdowns in the first half alone, two interceptions in the game, and he did all that without even wearing a uniform. Look at it, he didn't need a helmet. I think he sold popcorn at halftime too. The Cavaliers <laughs> with a 60 spot on the board against Tallwood as they're three and three overall. Well, it's been fun, Andy. We'll do it again next week. Oh, it's been good, man. We've got some big matchups coming on, big games down the stretch. Until next time, Andy Michelle, Matt Hatfield, you're watching the Cox Sports Report.